Greetings to all pastors, theology students, and saints who are attending today's Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. It is great to meet you all. My name is Kim min Su, who will be today's host of the event. Last lesson, through the instructor of Bartholomew tribe, we learned about the word on the fulfillment of the subjects of the kingdom and those who take their places in the kingdom of heaven. The reason why we can testify the meaning and the true reality of the parables in Shincheonji Church of Jesus is that first, as the promised time has come, all the parables have become revealed plainly. And there is also the promised pastor who saw and heard all the secrets of heaven that was hidden next to Jesus. I pray that we can check the word of the parables and the fulfillment of the Old and New Testaments by chapter and have the precious time to realize. Firstly, let us pray with the same heart. Our thankful and gracious Holy Father God, on this day, at this precious time, as you allowed your grace, as you allow all the believers around the global village in one heart, allow us to realize your word of truth. We sincerely give all thanks and glory, especially through the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, Shincheonji Online Seminar. Please allow this word of truth from heaven to be sealed in each and every one of our hearts. Through this word, let us realize your will. And by that, please help us so that we can be led to that eternal kingdom of heaven. Now, rather than persecution and disruption, let us be united in one inside of your word and move forward to your will. So, Father God, please lead all the spirits of the people gathered here and allow us to become the physical fulfillment of this word. We ask you to be with us from the beginning to the end. We pray all this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Now is the time to testify the parables and the physical fulfillment. Today, it will be Lesson 9 on the testimony of the secret of kingdom of heaven on two kinds of seed and the harvest. Let us open our hearts widely as we hear the word and have a precious time to receive realization. We will greet Matthew Tribe, Kim Jin Sung Instructor. To all the pastors, theology students, and saints around the world who have the hope of Kingdom of Heaven, greetings. My name is Kim Jin Sung of Matthew Tribe, Jemulpo Church of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Today, through the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter Shincheonji Online Seminar, we sincerely thank you for attending today's seminar. The word we will meditate together today, it is Intermediate Level Lesson 9, The Secret of the Kingdom of Heaven on Two Kinds of Seed and the Harvest. The reference chapter will be Matthew 13 and Revelation chapter 14. Among the pastors who are listening to this seminar, there may be those who know or may not know also about this content. At this time, let us open our hearts widely and I'll be thankful if you can listen well to my explanations. Firstly, I will shortly explain about today's main reference, Matthew 13. Matthew 13 is a chapter about the secrets of kingdom of heaven, where Jesus explained about the secret of heaven in parables. The time when it was recorded was approximately 2,000 years ago from today, and the recorder is Jesus' disciple, Matthew. The key point of Matthew 13 and Revelation 14 is regarding the content of the two kinds of seed and the prophecy and fulfillment regarding the harvest. In Matthew 13, Jesus spoke about the secrets of kingdom of heaven in many different parables. 
Firstly, he spoke about the parable of sowing the seed from verse 1 to 9. And then from verse 18 to 23, he interpreted the parable of sowing the seed. As Jesus spoke about the parable of sowing the seed, he said that the seed fell on the path, rocky field, thorny field, and good soil. And as he explained, sowing the seed means to deliver the message about the kingdom of heaven. And when the message about the kingdom is sowed in the people's heart, which is the field, he spoke about how the field can be distinguished into four types. A person like the path is a person who hears the secrets of the kingdom of heaven but does not understand. The bird, which is the evil one, will come and take away the seed and therefore cannot be saved. A person like the rocky field is a man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But when trouble or persecution comes, he gives up on the word and falls away. In other words, it is a person who loses due to the persecution coming because of the word. Also, the one who is like the thorny field is like a man who hears the word. But because of the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth, is choked. And lastly, the one who is like the good soil is a man who hears the word, understands it, produces crop yielding hundreds, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This in Luke 8 verse 15 is called those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. As Jesus speaks in parable like this, in verse 10, to 11, the disciples asked Jesus, Why do you speak to the people in parables? And Jesus answered, That the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. So he spoke about there are people who must understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, however, there are those who should not understand it. Thus, the reason why Jesus spoke the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables is to hide the secrets of the kingdom of heaven from the people who should not understand it. Thus, Satan and those who belong to Satan. Also as written in verse 34 and 35, Jesus spoke in parables so that God, who prophesied to speak in parables in Psalm 78, comes to Jesus and fulfills the word of the Old Testament prophet. Therefore, all pastors and theology students and saints who are listening to the word of the kingdom of heaven being testified today, I pray that when the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that Jesus hid in parables, the revealed word about the two kinds of seed and harvest become testified, we will all understand its true meaning and become the good soil that are the fruitful people of the kingdom of heaven. Now, we will learn about today's topic, which is the secret of the kingdom of heaven on two kinds of seed and harvest. As we will learn soon about the two kinds of seed that are sowed at the time of the first coming, written in Matthew 13. Then, through the history of the Bible, let's learn about the reason why the two kinds of seed were sowed and also the story of God. God, in order to find back the global village that was lost, God made a covenant with the chosen people in each era. Among them, God made a covenant with the people of physical Israel, who were the descendants of Abraham in the Old Testament. In Exodus 19, 5-6, God made a covenant with the people of the physical Israel and promised that now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, although the whole earth is mine, you'll be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. However, the people of the physical Israel did not keep the covenant with God and worshipped the Gentile gods, and thereby committed sin before God. As we see in Hosea 6 verse 7, and also 1 Kings chapter 11, 
It is written that Solomon and the people of the physical Israel broke the covenant just like Adam and became corrupted before God. Eventually, it was at the time of Solomon when the covenant was broken due to the rebellion. As a result, the people of the physical Israelites were destroyed by the Gentiles. As we see, as Abraham's descendants are also born from the gene of Adam who sinned, they could not believe in God until the end and committed sin again at the time of Solomon. As the physical Israel broke the covenant and betrayed like this, God promised through the Old Testament prophets about the future events. And this is a prophecy of Jeremiah 31 that was made through prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 31 verse 22, God prophesied to create the new thing. Then, what would be the creation of the new thing? It is different from the covenant made at the time of Moses. It is not through the chosen people who betrayed, who are born from the gene of Adam who sinned. The new thing is creating the new kingdom, new people, through the new chosen people. And this becomes complete when Revelation 21 is fulfilled. Then, what are the two works that God did for the creation of the new thing? It is promising to sow the two kinds of seed and to make a new covenant. Firstly, in order to find out about the two kinds of seed, let us read Jeremiah 31 verse 27. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and of animals. As we read, God promised that the seed of men and seed of animals will be planted in the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In other words, it is a promise about two kinds of seed that will be sowed in one field. And for about 600 years, this word was spread. And God who promised this came to Jesus and fulfilled His promise. God, as we see in Isaiah 14 verse 24, God is the one who will surely fulfill all His word of promise. Therefore, even the prophecy about sowing the seed spoken by prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled 600 years later at the time of the first coming. As God who made the promise came to Jesus who was a promised pastor of the Old Testament and fulfilled these words, as prophesied, the sowing of two seeds became fulfilled in Matthew 13, 24-30. Then, how did the promise about sowing the two kinds of seed become fulfilled at the time of the first coming? Let's find out through Matthew 13, 24 till 30. It says that Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away, it says. As the good seed and the weed were sowed in one field, the prophecy, Jeremiah 31 verse 27, became fulfilled. As it continues in verse 26, it is written, when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. 
At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Like this, it is written that the two kinds of seed will be sowed in one field and grow together, and at the time of harvest, the two kinds of seed will be distinguished. The good seed will be harvested to the barn, and the wheat will be tied up in bundles and be burned. However, as the disciples did not know its true meaning, therefore Jesus explained about the parable of the sowing of the two kinds of seed in Matthew 13, 37-39. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world. This field is the world of Jesus who sowed the good seed. Then, would this world be the world of non-believers or the world of Christianity? Yes, it will be the world of Christianity. And it says, The good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom, the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of age. Then pastors, the field mentioned before was the world, and this world is the world of Christianity. Therefore, what kind of world is the world that comes to an end? Yes, you're right. It is the end of the world of Christianity, thus the end of the traditional churches. It has been 2,000 years since a seed was sowed in the Christian churches, and thereby this becomes the traditional churches. Furthermore, it says harvesters are angels. To summarize, the field where the two kinds of seed were sowed was Jesus' field, which is the churches of Christianity. Inside the churches, they are the sons of the kingdom who are born of the good seed, but there's also the sons of the evil one, born of the weed. Also, Jesus explained in verse 40 to 43 about the result of the ones born of the good seed and born of the weed. It says, As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. At the time of the harvest, who will be the ones who are not harvested when they should be, but only do evil? Yes, they are the ones born of the weed, the devil seed, and not become harvested. Furthermore, it says, they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, which means there will be the judgment. In verse 43, it is written, Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear, it says. The righteous are referring to the people born of the seed of God, which is the good seed, those who become harvested. Then, I would like to show you in an illustration regarding the words just explained in Matthew 13, 24-30, 37-39, and also verse 40-43. to First of all, it is said there are two kinds of seeds sowed in one field. So what are the two kinds of seed? Yes, that's right. It is the seed of God, the good seed, and the seed of the devil, the weed. Also, the one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, Jesus, and the enemy who sowed the weed was the devil and the devil's pastor. Where is the one field where the two kinds of seed were sowed? Yes, that's right. The field was His field, so the world of the churches of Christianity. These two kinds of seed 
grow together until the time of harvest. This time of harvest, in Matthew 13, verse 39, is referred as the end of age, thus the end of the churches of Christianity. Therefore, it is the end of the corrupted traditional churches. Therefore, whether one is a son of God born of God's seed, or the son of the devil born of the devil's seed, it is not distinguished until the time of the harvest. However, finally, at the time of harvest, they become distinguished. How do they become distinguished at that time? Yes. At the time of harvest, those who are born of God's seed, the sons of God, will be harvested to the barn. They will become the people of the kingdom of heaven. But the ones born of the devil's seed will become the sons of the devil, remain in their own field, their own churches, be tied up in bundles and receive the fire judgment. At the time of harvest, one may claim that I am born of God's seed, I am the child of God. However, if one is not harvested and remain in their church, who will they be? Yes, that's right. It is called, they are the sons of the devil. Are these my words or are these the words of the Bible? They are the words of Matthew 13 inside the Bible. Therefore, have I been harvested according to the promise, or have I not been harvested, we must think. At the time of harvest, one must become harvested at the time of harvest, and this becomes the evidence that one is a child of God. As a seed has been sowed 2,000 years ago, when would be the time of now? Is it the time to sow the seed, or would it be the time to harvest? Yes, that's right. It is now the time of harvest. At the time of the second coming, according to the promise of Matthew 13, it is to harvest the people born of God's seed. Then how does the work of harvest happen? Let us read Revelation 14, 14 to 16 together. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. As it says, the angel swung his sickles over the earth, and the earth was harvested. The harvesters are the angels, and according to the promise of Matthew 13, Jesus comes together with the angels, and the fruits born from the seed, sowed at the time of the first coming, who have become ripe, thus the people born of God's seed become harvested. Then, when the angels harvest, what will be the sickle which is a tool of harvest? When we look from the physical logic, as a fruit that is ripe is harvested by using a sickle, the sickle that harvests the saints born of God's seed will be the word of God that is used to evangelize the saints, and also it means the person who has the word of God who is doing that work of harvesting. Like this, the wheat-like saints who are born of God's seed and are harvested are the first fruits of 144,000 that are gathered in Mount Zion, recorded in Revelation 14, 1 to 5. And this Mount Zion, where the first fruits are gathered, becomes the reality of the barn promised in Matthew 13. Also, as it says in Revelation 14, 1 to 5, on the forehead of the 144,000 first fruits, there is a name of God and the name of Jesus written on them. And they become the new kingdom, the new people, the twelve tribes sealed by God's seal in Revelation 7. And, as it is written, God will spread His tent over them and will be together with them. Therefore, this place 
is the new heaven, new earth. Shincheonji, where God, Jesus, and the holy city, New Jerusalem, thus the spiritual realm of heaven come down to, according to the promise of Revelation 21, 1-4. Therefore, the reality of Mount Zion, where the harvested, sons of the kingdom of heaven are gathered, become God's new kingdom, the new people, the twelve tribes. This is the completion of the creation of the new thing that God promised. As we realize inside the word, the people who have not been harvested are the sons of the devil who entered the eternal hell, the burning surfer. However, the people who are harvested are the sons of God and will be saved and will enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. Then, how are the ones who are harvested and not harvested become written in the words of Matthew 8, 11 to 12? Let us read the verses together. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. As we see in Matthew 8, 11 to 12, the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness. Therefore, they are the reality of the people who had not been harvested and the ones who come from the east and the west and take their places in the kingdom of heaven will be the reality of the people who are harvested. They are spoken in Revelation 6 and 7 as the traditional churches that receive the judgment and the new kingdom, new people, the twelve tribes. Also in Revelation 21 verse 1, it is spoken as the first heaven, first earth that passes away and the recreated new heaven and new earth. To summarize, those who are not harvested, thus the ones born of the devil's seed, is the subject of the kingdom, the traditional churches that receive the judgment, and the first heaven, first earth. And those who are harvested, thus the ones born of God's seed, are the ones who come from the east and the west and take their places in the kingdom of heaven, the new kingdom, new people, twelve tribes, and the new heaven, new earth. As we can see, God's objective and will is to harvest the people born of God's seed on this earth, harvest, seal, and create the new kingdom, new people, the Shincheonji twelve tribes, according to the promise of Revelation 7, 14, and 21. And God settles everything of the past and comes down to the new kingdom, new people, Shincheonji 12 tribes, and reign over. We believe this is God's objective and will. Therefore, in today's time, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, the last days of harvest, what we must check is, Who am I? in the Bible, and whether I have been created according to the promise of the Bible. Furthermore, we who are living in this generation must put in the sincere effort according to the promise of God and Jesus to be born of God's seed, harvested, sealed, and belong to the promised new kingdom, new people, twelve tribes, so that we are the people of the kingdom of heaven that God can acknowledge. Lastly, we would like to summarize the word that was shared today. The physical Israel of the Old Testament sinned, and therefore God promised to sow the two kinds of seed and make a new covenant for the creation of the new thing in Jeremiah 31. And at the time of the first coming of Jesus, the seed of God and the seed of the devil, thus the two kinds of seed, were sowed in His field, which is the world of the churches of Christianity. 
at the time of the second coming, the first heaven, first earth comes to an end, and by harvesting the people born of God's seed and sealing them, the twelve tribes have been established. Therefore, God's objective and will is to settle all the corrupted things of the past and to establish God's new kingdom and new people through the people born of God's seed, and as the world that God forever reigns becomes fulfilled, this was the objective and the will of God. Have you heard today's word well? Next lesson will be Intermediate Level 10, The Second Coming of the Lord and the Signs of the End of Age. Main reference will be Matthew 24. As Jesus spoke about the signs of the end of age in Matthew 24, through this content, I hope that we can rightly realize about what are the events that's going to happen at the end of age at the time of the second coming. The instructor who will lead us in the next lesson will deliver the word much better than me. I hope that we can have a hopeful heart and look forward to the next lesson where we can all see each other again. Lastly, with the meaning that we are one in God and Jesus, let us shout, we are one and finalize. We are one in God beyond race, nationality, and religion. We are one. Let us pray together. Our Holy Father God, who is full of love and grace, through today's Shincheonji Online Seminar, the testimony of the Revelation and Old and New Testaments by chapter, as it becomes open to the whole world and becomes testified, we truly give you all thanks and glory for your love and grace, especially the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that all believers must know today. Through the intermediate level, lesson 9, the secrets of heaven, of the two kinds of seed, and the harvest, this content becomes testified. We pray that we'll all be the good soil, the good heart, the ones who are born of good seed that can be harvested and sealed, that can be led to, the kingdom of heaven, Shincheonji, 12 tribes. With the future lessons of the intermediate education, please allow us the eyes to see, ears to hear, and the heart to realize so we can endure, persevere until the end to become the precious saints that can be led to the kingdom of heaven. With all these prayers, we pray, and as we believe, in the name of Jesus, who is still working today. Amen. We sincerely thank you for listening until the end. They asked, What is a sign of your coming and of the end of age? Where is the other nation that God, nation, Israel, fighting against? As spoken by the prophet Daniel, the abomination that causes desolation is to stand in the holy place. Who are the pregnant women and who are the nursing mothers? The heaven and earth may pass away, and it says, My words, Jesus' word, will never pass away. So therefore, the words of Matthew 24 will surely be fulfilled. What is the food that is given at the proper time? And who is the faithful and wise servant that will be put in charge of all of Jesus' possession? Yes, as you saw in the video, next lesson will be the second coming of the Lord and the signs of the end of age. The time will be same time as today, 10 a.m. We hope that you will attend next time as well, and we all become equipped as a people who can have the qualification to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, Shincheonji Online Seminar, is being broadcasted all around the world in 24 different languages through Shincheonji Church of Jesus official YouTube channel. And also, God's New Covenant, the prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, 
and also the Revelation Seminar, and through the Elementary Seminar, the Parables of the Secret of Kingdom Heaven and the Testimony of the Fulfillment, there are many pastors and churches around the world who are showing great interest signing MOUs with Shincheonji Church of Jesus. In addition to the word that you heard today, if you have any other questions or curiosities of Shincheonji Church of Jesus or our teaching, please call these numbers shown on the screen showing the numbers of each tribe. We'll be happy to guide you kindly. Now, with the prayer that the Lord has taught us, we will complete all the orders of Shincheonji Online Seminar. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Everyone who are here together with us, we sincerely thank you.